Okay, welcome everyone. This is gonna be the newer adjustments for March the 8th, 2024. Also, Happy Women's Day to everyone. Hi. Uh, we will be going through the buffs and nerfs and the patches, and of course, the new trade given from the IDV devs to us. But of course, let's move on then. Then, the first hunter we go, we'll be able to see Wu Chan here. Uh, Wu got quite a bit of buffs here. The first buff is his White Guard's normal attack animation has currently been increased from 0 0.82 seconds to 0 0.7. <sighs> So here, as we can see, the animation is quite fast if we compare it to before, and here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, now the next is going to be Blackguard. So this is Wu Chan's second book. For Blackguard, window vaulting time is reduced from 2 seconds to 1.8 seconds. Now, I am, I do have red pins, so you might not be able to see that much of a difference, but Wu Chan's Blackguard now can actually vault windows pretty, pretty fast now. Well, I mean, it's a 0 0.2 second buff, but it is still pretty fast. Let's see a side-to-side -side comparison. Okay, now then, for Wu's last buff, Wu's last buff in a nutshell, it's saying that the animation for casting Soul Siphon at tier 2 is reduced from 2 to 1 second, but we just need to make one thing clear, right? When you're actually activating the Soul Siphon like this, it's not reduced from 2 seconds to 1 seconds. This is still 2 seconds, regardless of whether you're in tier 1 or when you're in tier 2, but... But what that skill means is when you're changing from black guard to white guard, it's even faster. So here, as we can see, I mean black guard. Let's change to white guard here immediately. And see how fast this casting time is. This casting time has been reduced from 2 seconds to 1 seconds. Let's just see a side-by-side -side comparison real quick before we move on towards the next hunter. Now the next hunter is Nayid. Nayid got a very nice buff. It, it's a little bit of a mini buff, but her surging tides, which is her dash, has been reduced from 18 seconds charging time to 15 seconds charging time. So you can now get her dashes pretty, pretty, pretty fast now. Let's just see real quick. Okay, now the next will be Aeroplanist. Aeroplanist will see quite a bit, it's a bit of an adjustment, right? So first thing, of course, for Aeroplanist is his hover is now refreshable. Of course, there's a 150 second cooldown for it, but he can now use hover as much as he actually wants to. So let's just see the cooldown here once again. Up, down, and there you go. There is the, there is the uh, cooldown there for hover. But of course, as we do know as well, the mini nerf, well, the nerf here for our poor man is actually the fact that his his hover has been reduced quite a bit here. So let's just see the distance real quick. Okay, now then, next will be Opera Singer. Opera Singer got quite a bit of a nerf. So the first nerf is that her speed boost when entering Shadow Realm is reduced from 50 seconds, uh, no, 50% to 45%. Now, why is this a good buff? This is a, no, not buff. Why is this a good nerf? This is a good nerf, especially for survivors, because one survivor vaults over a wind or a pallet, they maintain 50% vault uh, movement speed boost. But for Opera Singer here, Opera only has 45%. So even if Opera is in Shadow Realm and she keeps dashing, uh, survivors will always, you know, move faster than she is right after their vault buff. So this is pretty much of a really nice nerf here for Opera Singer, especially from the survivor's point of view as well. But of course, next on the list is going to be uh, Opera Singer Shadow Dance. So Opera Singer Shadow Dance has been reduced from 20 or oh, 15. Oh, uh, sorry, the Shadow Dance cooldown has been increased from 17 seconds to 20 seconds. Now, we'll show it to you right here immediately. It's currently at 20 second cooldown compared to the usual, which is 17 seconds. But of course, because of this right now, uh, survivors basically have an easier time tight kiting Opera Singer. You may think three seconds isn't really that much, but they have nerfed Opera Singer's teleport back time when it comes to, you know, the shadow dancing back. So overall for Opera Singer nerf here, she may be a little bit more balanced compared to usual now in rank of course okay next big buff is actually for painter so painter has received a really big buff let me just explain this to you guys slowly so his first buff is that when he gets 67 percent of hunter's face he can actually draw a painting so let's just get 67 percent real quick 
Okay, we got 67%. So in a nutshell, we can now draw his draw gamekeeper's face, but at a little bit of a slower speed. Now that's point number one. Point number two is you can actually place down a painting when you, when painter has 67% uh, painting done. Of course, this may not seem like much, but but um, I guess it's pretty good in a fa in a way that if you know if hunter has excitement and excitement did you and you want to put another painting down immediately you could by potentially speaking do this as well so let's just uh open ai and there's gk taking the painting right there but of course since painting is only 67 percent painted the stun duration isn't actually that long as you have seen there as well since the stun duration really isn't that long it's really just you know probably a bit better for painter to actually get that full painting first before anything else Yep, that's a little bit of a longer stun. Now, we do have one more team to keep in mind. We do have one more team to keep in mind. So see here when we're painting the painting right, we have an up to 67% before we can deploy the painting down. Now, as you can see on the bottom left hand side of the screen, there is two options. You press F to keep drawing, or you press R to place down the painting. So just be very mindful when you do this in rank that you actually press the right button when you put down the painting and not the wrong, wrong button to keep painting. So there's that as well. But of course, when you're, uh, but of course, when you've basically gotten a full painting painted, whether you press F or or not or not, let's see what the difference is. There is no difference. It's the same. Whether you press F or or, they they basically you just do the same thing. But yeah, that's quite a big buff here for painter. Oh, by the way, just in case I didn't add it in. Oh, I know I did add it in. I did I did say that yeah, the sun duration is a bit shorter. Okay, good. Now then, Wildling, Wildling got a major buff. This buff is actually so huge to the point that I do think Wildling may go into Thai Guarantee or Niche or Solo Ranker type of character right now. So the first buff for Wildling, the first buff for Wildling is, in a nutshell, uh, when you get on Moodle, on uh, round one, when you get on Moodle, as you see here, you accumulate Rage, but once you get off Moodle, the the board time has been reduced from 20 from 60 seconds to 30 seconds this is absolutely op and just let me tell you why the only reason why this is op is you can first of all get on board immediately and you can go in for the rescue you can get off board early right and install for a little bit more time and once you're once you get the rescue, survivor gets hit, the survivor can run towards the corner, you get on board immediately and then you can start harassing the hunter. This is a really major buff here for, you know, Wildling. This is honestly speaking a really, really, really big buff here for Wildling. So Wildling, after getting this buff, I would probably be seeing him quite a lot from now and we will most likely be able to see him quite a lot from now in ranks or in tourneys. Now, of course, that is Wildling's biggest buff let's talk about his other small buffs that are really really good as well so the next small buff is his you know but his uh, getting onto Moodle animation has been reduced so she can basically get on Moodle faster now as we see here that was pretty fast yeah and then the next thing is the shortened animation of Wildling after performing on bump in a nutshell you do you, you perform this animation faster There we go. And uh, and honestly speaking, that is about it. There is one more thing in which says if Wailing is interrupted when charging the, at the hunter, it is interrupted, the hunter's not back will also be interrupted. In a nutshell, what this means is if Wailing, let's say, let's say this for example, right? If Wailing is charging a hunter and um, basically while you're charging the hunter, the hunter gets stunned or pushed back somewhere else. There's another, you know, stun animation. It'll basically cancel Wildling's pushback. And it'll basically counter the hunter's pushback too. So in a nutshell, that's what that means. That's what that means. So if we see here as well, right, we push, it just gets cancelled immediately. So if there's something else behind the hunter, he doesn't actually keep getting pushed back. He just gets pushed and he stops. One more performance. There we go. Okay, so Jurnus buff is actually quite major. Jurnus now can actually have four containment little Orphees. Let me just close my, uh, let's just cancel uh, auto replenish item, but uh, uh, enable the skill cooldown. So we're gonna be able to pull this down. 
and this goes immediately in right this goes immediately in that which is which is not bad which is not bad here uh but once we do this right so we can keep doing this uh, let's just keep doing this real quick let's just keep doing this real quick oh Okay, so we basically consumed all of our treadle or feast for the pallet, but see here, right? If we still, if we are first chase and we didn't rescue, you can actually use it as a containment, as a containment uh, little orphy there. So there is also that too, I guess. This isn't actually pretty bad for Alice, but I would say it's quite a bit of a major buff from three items to four items, especially first chase as well, when you're you know, little Orphe cool in six seconds. You can if you can spam four of these and play a really long time. Jesus Christ, you're gonna be able to buy so much time with journalist, but that's gonna be the end of journalist buff. Now for Perfumer, Perfumer did receive a little bit of a buff. So for Perfumer, she basically goes back, uh, per well, animation going back to Perfume mode is reduced by half. So that's pretty much a really good thing. Let's just see here how fast is this. Do I throw the Perfume out with F? Okay, pretty nice. And let's Perfume back. We can move immediately. So that's, that's honestly speaking pretty fast. This is pretty good for Perfumer, especially when she wants to rotate towards nearby pallets or windows right after, you know, like getting a Perfumer out. So for example here, oh, how Hunter baited you out, no problem at all. I'll keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running. Perfume back. Ooh, I'm ready back. That is quite fast, isn't it? Let's do a side by side comparison here. Okay, let's move on towards uh, Insulin. So Insulin's got, re Insulin's got really nice effect animations now here as you do see as well. So in a nutshell, in a nutshell you gain up to 1000 presence of Insulin from Insulin's points. And when you reach tier 1, you basically, the, basically the rate of Insulin popping up is now, in a nutshell, slower. So let's teleport towards the survivor real quick. We are going to hit a survivor right here. And we open phase one. See how insulin stir is still increasing. See how insulin stir is still increasing. Now I will leave insulin here to let it keep increasing. But uh, in a nutshell, you can now actually gain 1,000 insulin points, which is absolutely brilliant for Nayid, for Wax Artist, for Bonbon Sculptor. You know the ones that actually need, and and let's say Nightwatch. But like these are honestly speaking brilliant for the ones that need max presence. Even for Leo as well. This is quite a nice buff, even though this probably should have happened anyways. You should have been giving us what has been since anyways. Nice. Why are you so late on towards this? Oh my fucking god! Anyways, thank you, Nice. We I don't know when that is actually gonna stop, but you know. We're just gonna let it keep going. That's pretty slow right now. Sorry about that, but that's actually pretty slow right now. It will stop at some point. Listen to me. It will stop at some point. We are just going to have to see when it actually stops. When is this gonna stop? I'm a bit confused. When is this gonna stop? It has been 1,000 incidents, right? There's no way it keeps going. Well, I mean, you're just you guys are just gonna be here for with me for a while. That's another hit. We got a terror shock and another hit. Okay. Uh, that incident should stop once we reach max presence. It should stop once we reach max presence, if I'm not wrong. But let's just see. It's, 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 as you can see, it's actually slowing down the closer we are getting to 2500 presence there. But yeah, you're in a nutshell able to gain um, 1k presence, regardless of whether you open tier 1 or not. But of course, after you open tier 1, it's going to be way slower. <laughs> Is it a max press? It's Seer is literally bleeding out. Seer is bleeding out. Guys, Seer is bleeding out. Jesus, this is so slow. Once it reaches max presence, it should stop though. Is it there? Is it there? Is it a max presence? Please tell me it's a max presence. Oh my god, what am I looking at right now? How slow is that? Jesus. Oh, it stopped now. Nice. Alright, Tammy. Bye-bye. You should go too. Okay then.
This is going to be the most interesting one of them all. It's going to be our new active trait. It's called teleport. There's one just second cooldown. And the bad thing about this is that you can actually only use it twice. In a nutshell, you can summon a mirror wherever you want to summon this. It's kind of like BQ. It's good for B BQ players, let's say, okay? It's good for BQ players. This is the max distance you can actually pull the mirror out. And we can pull it out towards two-story areas too. Now, you once you put down this skill... This comes up, you have to travel over via this. You go over, and then you pop out here immediately. And of course, you can go back whichever way you want to go. But once you do this, the mirror will disappear. Once you do this, the mirror will disappear. Uh, in a nutshell, this wouldn't be bad if you want to... Honestly speaking, this probably wouldn't be bad if you want to, like, you know, have some map control this that the other but uh since we're here anyways let's just give it a look real quick so if we want to put a mirror or uh, let's say we, we want to put it upstairs okay so we put it upstairs let's go through it first pop we're here let's go through it again pop we're back the cooldown is 100 seconds now compared to teleport it's 120 seconds I guess, I guess in a nutshell, 120 seconds versus 100 seconds, there is a little bit of a difference, but, um, since you can TP back also at the same time, I guess it isn't bad. For this trade overall, it could be used instead of teleport if you really want to do so, but it also wouldn't be as good as teleport since, as you see here, there's limited range. So honestly speaking, is limited range. This is probably better in a situation where it is like, you know, a small map like factory, etc, etc. But even with that on mind here, if you see this distance, I'm quite sure even if it's on arms factory, it only leads you from, um, not, it doesn't really lead you far. But you know what, let's check the skill out from each different map and from one exit gate to the other then, shall we? Okay, now then, we're going to be in Arms Factory, so we're currently on one side of the gate right here. Let's just stand as closely towards the gate as possible and throw the mirror out to see where it actually lands us. So there we throw the mirror out, we now walk through the mirror. So from the gate, you go around exactly half the map, almost half the map, let's say, you're near that side from machine. So it's not really a really good substitution for teleport, but I guess in a sense, when trying to count the last three sides from machine, for example, if the last three sides from machine are this, this, and dash, you could potentially speaking use this skilling set as there is a little bit of a lower cooldown. Now, once again, if you see teleporting from one side to another, it's not really the best as well, since there is still a little bit more distance, but you know, overall, it's Okay, that's that for Arms Factory. Let's move on towards another map. Okay, on towards our next map here. It's gonna be Red Church. So we're gonna stand by the gate here once again. We're gonna pull this mirror out and let's see where this mirror lands. So this is gonna be a straight line, right? Even though Exit Gate is over there, this is gonna be a straight line. So let's just see it real quick. We're gonna be able to throw the mirror out. And where do we land? We land at around where the pallet actually spawns. If we actually came in the middle, but I guess, you know, that's that for church. Okay, so next on the list will be Sacred Hearts Hospital. For a hospital, it'll be... We'll, throw, we'll just throw it straight out here. No, you know what? We'll throw around this... Well, we can throw it actually straight out here. Uh, but there are still some things blocking ourselves in the middle there, so that's a little bit unfortunate. I guess let's just throw it out this way to see if we can actually get towards the cypher machine from here. As we can see, you know what? Just about enough. Honestly speaking, just about enough to make it towards this cypher machine from that gate. Okay, next on the list will be Lakeside Village. Lakeside is a relatively big map. So if we see this is being pulled out there, it's actually not quite a lot. But let's throw it out in a straight line here immediately and see where we land. To be honest with you, this is quite unimpressive. Now, I know 60 meters isn't supposed to be that long, but this, honestly speaking, is a little bit unimpressive right now. So let's move on towards the next map. Okay, now next thing to note, I guess next thing really to note is Moonlit River Park. So for Moonlit in a nutshell, we probably won't be testing it out based on where, you know, the exit gate is. We'll be doing it based on where the roller coaster is. So let's see from first stop to fourth stop here immediately. Can we get there on time? So this is from first stop to fourth stop immediately. This honestly speaking isn't bad, you can make it on time. Then what about from second stop to third stop? Seems like we're able to put the mirror up on third stop. Can we do it downstairs is a good question. It seems like we cannot do it downstairs, so we can actually only put the mirror upstairs here. But let's just give it a try real quick. Upstairs we go, let's take the mirror over. 
And ye okay, never mind. We still spawn downstairs, apparently. We do still spawn downstairs here, apparently. I guess it's really just based on the placement overall. But you know what? Actually, you know what? Let's let's give it another try. I'm willing to give this another try. It's a little bit hard to do. But I'm willing to give this another try. Are we upstairs? We are upstairs. Okay, good news. Now then, from third stop to fourth stop. Oh, as you can see, it's it's 100% doable. It is 100% doable right here. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. That's kind of all what we needed to know. Kind of all what we needed to know here as well. Now then, let's move on towards the next map. Next map is Leo's Memories. For Leo's, we could try to exit gate, but I think what's more important here is to see if we can actually put it upstairs to stairs cases here. And it seems like it's not too impossible. Seems like we can actually put it up there. Okay, good news. Good, that's good to know. So we can at least put the mirror up here. But once you get the mirror up here, here comes the second issue. The second issue is, hmm, seems like we're going to be able to put this on towards the other side, which is not bad. Then what about if we are here? Can we put that there? We seem like we can as well, but we can only do it from a two-story setting. We can only do it from a two-story setting here as well. But I feel like it's quite a little bit of a waste of an ability. Now, it might not be too bad, but since you can't actually put it upstairs, that's going to be a little bit annoying here. Because if you can actually just immediately put it upstairs, that, honestly speaking, wouldn't be pretty bad. But as we can see here as well, right, the distance in the nutshell, that... It's, it's not that much distance. From one cipher to the other, you, you still do have quite a little bit more distance to cover yourself as well. This wouldn't be the best map to use this, but I guess, you know, if we just go towards the exit gate right here, and we're going to aim our mirror towards... So we're going to hug this wall, and I'm going to pull this out. Let's see how far we go. And that's about that, honestly. So that's that for... Um, Leo's. Okay, let's look at uh, our, um, not arms, Ever Sleeping Town right now. So we apparently can actually put the mirror upstairs here. So that's not bad news. We can actually put the mirrors upstairs here. Uh, potentially speaking, you can also put the mirrors down from upstairs as well. So whenever someone actually vaults down, you can just go down and hit them here. Which, you know what, isn't honestly that much of a bad thing to do as well. Now, there is another thing I guess we do have to take into consideration, and that's actually two-story in balcony here. Seems like we're able to do it, but we can't do it where there's a drop-down level there. That's a little bit unfortunate, but we can do it up here, which, you know... It is pretty good to a sense. Hello. It is pretty good to a sense. It is pretty good to a sense. But I guess if we really want to see the diff distance between one gate towards the other right now, let's just give it a try real quick from this exit gate to the next. So we're going to pull up a straight line. Um, based on my straight line, uh, it's, 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 it's okay of a distance, let's say. It's okay of a distance, let's say. You could potentially, speaking, camp one or two cypher machines with this, but um, from one gate to the other, at max, it can only get you up to around, like, half the actual distance. So, there's that for every sleeping town. Okay, let's see here. We are going to be in our last map. So last map is going to be Chinatown. Can we put this upstairs in Chinatown? Seems like we can put it on this stairs right here. But everything else is kind of a no-go here. But let's just try this out. We can get up towards this staircase. I see. Uh, I accidentally did that. Oops. Uh, but we're able to place it down. Let me just check real quick. Can we actually put it upstairs from this area? So you are going to be able to place the mirror up, but you can see like there's a lot of, you know, push and pull situation here. Like I don't know what the whole shaban about that is. It just does that. But uh, if you want to go upstairs, this brings you towards this pilot. So you probably don't want to do this. Realistically speaking, I would do it if that doesn't bring me to the pilot. So you have to be very careful with the placement here and actually place it. Uh, even so, like, it's kind of bad. It is, honestly speaking, kind of bad if you want to put it upstairs. You can't put it on this balcony area and it doesn't seem like you can put it here as well. Now, we are going to throw this out one more time and just to see on the other two-story area real quick. So let's see here. Uh, oops. So let's see here. We're not going to be able to place it upstairs. Can we? We can put it on the stairs here somehow. Somehow. Okay. Somehow being able to put it on stairs. What about this stairs here? This stairs, it's uh, a really good question mark. A really good question mark. Now, my question here as well is, can we can we put it upstairs from this area on 
because there is a mini staircase here. No, you can't. Ooh, you can't. A little bit unfortunate, I guess. A little bit unfortunate. You, that's the max height you can actually get from that area. From this area. Yeah, this is the max height you can get. A little bit unfortunate, but this is the max height you can get. Then let's see the difference between one gate towards the other. Okay, you know what? Not not bad of a halfway point. Halfway point wise, it's actually exactly halfway where the world tree is. So this is pretty good. This is a pretty good thing. Pretty good thing for um, Chinatown if you want to come to exit gates like this. So yeah, that's going to be the end of this skill. Let's move on towards the Hunter's Buff and Adjustment Stand, shall we as well? Okay, uh, for the other miscellaneous... um. Buffs on nerfs and patches, I guess. So for others, novelists can swap positions with Dream Witches followers when they're not being controlled. Listen, uh, you know what that is. I'm not gonna demonstrate. Uh, just a field of view for mobile devices with different screen ratios: uh, 6.8 inch, 6.9 inch, 7 inch phones, things like that. And of course, fix an issue where Hunter can hit the survivor through rocket chairs. Listen to me, Nettie's. I can hit the rocket chair through survivors. What is this? Hunters can hit survivors through rocket chair patch. Where where is the hunter hit survivor not true rocket chair where what excuse me hello 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 i can literally hit survivors through rocket chairs no sorry i can literally i can i can my hitbox bypasses survivor's hitbox and hits the rocket chair the rocket chair hitbox is too big okay can we just talk about the rocket chair hitbox real quick Okay, what do you mean the hunter can hit survivors through rocket chairs? I hit the rocket chair first before I even land on the survivor, even when they're not near the hot rocket chair. Anyways, that's going to be the end of the adjustment here for March the 8th, 2022. It's going to be the end of Season 30, and I am Kuroshio Gaming. Thank you everyone for watching, and that's going to be the end of my rant, and of course for me wasting your time. bye bye. Get over here. Wait a second. Nice.